In the new terms of service that Amazon has imposed upon all sellers, it promised to give sellers 30 days notice before a suspension and also promised to give sellers seven days to cure any problem that they were notified of. However, Amazon created three huge loopholes and the loopholes are so broad that we broke this portion of the videos down into three separate sections, loophole A, loophole B, and loophole C. So please watch all three of these videos so that you will understand one, when you should expect a 30-day notice, and also each of the three gigantic loopholes where Amazon will not give you 30 days notice. Please watch all three of the videos and you will learn more about your new terms of service that Amazon has imposed upon all sellers. On paragraph three of the new BSA, uh, the terms and conditions. All right, Dave, why don't you start the conversation when it comes to the loopholes in sub B? Sure, again, I just wanna make it clear that these subsections A, B, and C, that this is when Amazon can suspend you immediately. So the 30 day uh, advance notice does not apply to these. Um, so the second one is when Amazon claims that you have been using your account for deceptive, fraudulent, or illegal activity. Now, notice that they don't define what any of those things are. So again, um, something that's illegal, that can be any IP complaint. So technically, if you're you know, accused of infringing on intellectual property law, that's a legal activity, so they would be able to suspend you right away. But that doesn't mean that you know that doesn't mean the claim is legitimate. You know that will also, I think, open Amazon up to arguments both on plans of action and later on that we can nail down that you're being accused of an illegal activity and you did not engage in the illegal activity. Um, that could potentially be defamation if third parties are aware. If your competitors are aware that you're no longer on Amazon, okay. Uh, then possibly may have some claims or better yet leverage to get reinstated if they're accusing you of illegal activity, which may qualify for, for defamation. And fraud is also a legal term. Yeah. So if you're being accused of, of engaging in fraud, you know, it's not that Amazon just saying you violated our BSA, it's fraud. That is legal significance and we can use that uh, in your plans of action to get you reinstated amicably, even if Amazon is employing sub B uh, in, in paragraph three, where I'm really sounding very lawyer there, try not to. <laughs> okay, now it also doesn't identify who determines whether an activity is fraudulent or deceptive or illegal. Exactly, it doesn't. So to me, again, that means where if you have any IP complaint on your account, then you could be on the hook for, for this. You know, you could be fall under 3B. And that's the problem with it. It's somebody clicking a button on, you know, in Amazon, you know, overseas somewhere, and that could have significant impact on your entire account. Now, the only time we've actually had Amazon define what deceptive was, was in these arbitrations. And we represent a lot of sellers and a lot of arbitrations. And at those hearings, we're able to get Amazon to give some details as to what they consider to be deceptive to that particular seller. So we have that information and we can use that to write plans of action for you where other people who are non-lawyers who cannot represent people at arbitrations don't have access to that information. That's the information for this loophole. And please make sure you watch all three videos regarding the loopholes Amazon created where it will not give you a 30 days notice or the seven days to cure.